Good morning, church. This is Pastor Nipra Vega of the Tulare Seventh-day Adventist Church. I'm so happy that you are joining me this morning because we're going to continue our series on the spirit of prophecy. The first part was on spiritual growth, and the next one is going to be just speaking about the pillars of our faith in connection to spiritual growth. So I'm happy that you are joining me. I know the Lord is going to bless us, so let's bow our heads and let's have a word of prayer. Oh, Father, as we begin this teaching, as we begin this instruction, as we begin to hear your word, Father, we pray, Father, I, that you would fill us with your Holy Spirit, that you would give us wisdom, that you would give us understanding, that you will allow us, oh, Father, to be able to understand the message that you have for us in this day. So, oh, Father, fill us with your spirit and, Father, help us to learn something new. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. So there was this uh, a couple family that, that went to the church uh, for the first time and they went to the nearest church in their town to their house. So they went there and they were excited. They were pumped. They said, yeah, you know, it's time to get back to God. It's time to go back to God. So as they went into the church, the greeter said, oh, hi, welcome to our church. We're so happy you're here. Oh, thank you. We're happy to be here, too. We just live around the, on the, around the corner. He's like, man, you're lucky. You're blessed. Today we have a guest speaker. It's the prophet, so on and so forth. Gave him a name. And then the person was just surprised. He was stunned. He was a prophet, a prophet. And, and he's like... Well, I guess we're blessed. And they went in and, and, and heard the message. But the question for us, as for him, is there prophets today? Is there real people today congregating in the church of God, the Christendom, and who are prophets? And if we are to encounter a prophet, how are we to determine if they're true prophets or false prophets? Those are the questions that the Lord is going to ask us. And at the end of this, give us, the, uh, uh, give us answers to those questions. And at the end of this sermon, you're going to have tools to be able to decipher between a true prophet and a false prophet. Remember that Joel chapter 2, 28 to 31 promised us that in the last days, the prophetic gift, uh, the prophetic gift will be manifested in the church in the last uh, days. In the last days. And in fact, look at something very interesting. Remember, I, I mentioned to you last week that the Seventh-day Adventist Church is the remnant church because the church uh, keeps the commandments of God and has the gift of prophecy that manifested itself in the in the ministry of, of Ellen G. White. Uh, look at what a historian says about that period of time when when uh, uh, the church, the remnant church, the last church was being established. Look at what the historian says. This is on, after chap chapter one of a book. It says, accepting the prophetic gift, 19th century religious context and years leading up to 1850. Look at what this historian says. The fourth element contributing to the charismatic and visionary background of American Christianity was the emergence of new religious group led by charismatic leaders, a leader. The late 18th and early 19th centuries witnessed the appearance of prophets or visionaries of all genders and conditions. Based on scholarly service of published sources only, pamphlets, broadside newspapers, liter literary journals, and evangel evangelical memoirs, memoirs Susan Justice has identified about 350 men and women who were recognized as prophets in England and North America in the period between 1750 and 1820. Juster notes, however, that the real number is probably much higher. Many were illiterate or did not keep a journal. While some of them made only brief appearances, others left enduring legacies and many followers, sometimes numbering in the thousands. So remember, but isn't that a crazy number? That in these in the 70-year period, this historian has noted that there's been there was over 315 people claimed to have the prophetic gift. This is the same time where the Lord is actually fulfilling his promise to give the prophetic gift at the end time. Is it possible that all these 350 people were true prophets? Well, if God was lifting up a movement, if God was giving the prophetic gift, do you think that God alone knew this? Or do you think that the enemy and the devil also knew this? Look at what Jesus tells us is going to be happening in the last days. 
Uh, and and he's, he speaks on prophets. Look at what Jesus says, Matthew 24, 11. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Matthew 24, 24. For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets and shall, and shall, and shall show great signs and wonders inasmuch if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. So Jesus says that in the last days, there's going to be a manifestation of the gift of the spirit, of the, the gift of prophecy. But there's going to be a lot of false manifestations of it. Because just as God has predicted in the word, then the last days, he will raise up uh, uh, the prophetic gift. The devil knows that too. The devil knows that too. He knows that. So as God was lifting up, the raising up the remnant church with a specific message, the everlasting gospel, the enemy was also active to deceive many. And, you know, as I try to look for today, uh, the, the figure there, I couldn't find the figure how many prophets are today, but I would tell you they number in the thousands. Thousands. Prophets, Christian, in Christian communities that believe these people are prophets. So what are we to do about this? We, what are we to do about this? Are there any living prophets today? Uh, how are we able to, to test it? How are we able to know if a person speaks with sp spiritual authority, if their gift is genuine, or if they're just, is, is, uh, they're deceived, or are they deceived? Well, today we're going to look at these tools. There's four specific tools that we're going to look at, and these four tools are going to help us to know exactly uh, if somebody has a genuine gift of prophecy or if, if they don't. So let's go into them. Are you ready? To, you want to get some tools? You're going to get some hammers and some nails? Let's start. Okay. Remember that as we approach this uh, study, we cannot be with a critical mind where we're closed. Because if God is working, we have to keep our eyes open. We have to keep our minds open. But it doesn't mean we're going to blindly obey, obey, blindly follow. God does not want blind believers. Jesus Christ want, wants intelligent believers. And he wants believers that uh, if he's working, he wants people to know, hey, I'm working. But he doesn't want us to just blindly follow demonstrations, signs, and wonders. Because a lot of people put their faith on what they feel and what they see. No, we need to put our word and our faith in the word of God because the word of God will guide and lead us. So look at what he says in regards to, to, to spirit, spiritual activity. He says, do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophecies. Test all things. Hold fast what is good. So what are we to do? We see somebody who claims to have the gift of prophecy. We're going to run away and be like, ah, no, nah, this guy is crazy. No, we're going to be like, okay, we're going to test it. Uh, share what you got, you know? And if it's from God, it's from God. If it's not, well, hey, I'm sorry, my brother. I think you're deceived. I don't think a prophet will probably take that very lightly. But oh, well, <laughs> I'm not following man. I'm following Jesus Christ. So check this out. The first test is this. Isaiah chapter 8, 20. This is the first test. To the law and to the testimony. If they do not speak according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Okay? To the law and to the testimony. To the scriptures. In other words, if they don't speak according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. So a prophet's teaching must be in congruence, alignment, and in harmony with the biblical teachings of Scripture. Why would, why would God, why would the Holy Spirit inspire a person, uh, inspire, fill a person with the gift of prophecy, that then that person will contradict what the Holy Spirit inspires somebody else to write? God is not a God of confusion. No, he's not. God is not going to contradict himself. He's not going to give the gift of the spirit of prophecy to one person just to contradict what Isaiah wrote, what John wrote, what Matthew wrote. No, if a person is speaking under the authority of the gift of the spirit, then that person is going to be speaking according to the word of God. See, this is the reason why I think 100% of all living prophets... They claim to be prophets are not prophets. 
Because why is God going to give the spirit to somebody that then contradicts the plain teachings of the Bible? They contradict the plain teachings of the Bible. For example, keeping the Ten Commandments. How about worshiping on the Sabbath day and keeping it holy? How about the state of the dead? What happens when you die? You know what I mean? Like, so why will God give somebody the, the prophetic gift then to contradict what he wrote? No. I'll get, if somebody is a prophet, then what they write, what they teach has to be in harmony with the Bible. Because if it's not in harmony with the Bible, guess what? I'm following the Bible. I'm not following a man, no matter how much healing power he has. The devil has the power to heal, and I'm not going to follow him. Heck no. I'm going to follow the Word of God. Because in the Word of God, I find my safety. I found my, my foundation. See, a prophet has to be in congruence with the word of God. If not, that person it does not have the prophetic gift. Look, and this is, there's a second element to this, to this, uh, to the congruence of the word of God. Uh, the Bible repeatedly tells us that we should not add or take away from the Bible. There's three specific places here. I'll read. Uh, I'll read two of them. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter twelve thirty two. Uh, whatever I command you, be careful to observe it. You shall not add, nor take away from it. Revelation, for I testify to everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book. If anyone adds to these things, God will add him to the plagues, the plagues that are written in the book. God doesn't want us to add or take away from, from the, the, the Bible. He doesn't want us to elevate other writings above the Bible. Or he doesn't want us to elevate other teachings above the Bible. Uh, this happens two ways, where there's either adding or taking away from the Bible. One is a self-proclaimed prophet elevates his teachings above the Bible. Many times there, there is there consider an additional writing or teachings that is considered can can canonical, which often happens to the exclusion of the scriptures, most commonly the Old Testament. So what I see a lot, there is uh, denominations, Christians, that follow a teachings of a prophet, and that prophet has his own writings, because, you know, most of those prophets probably have died. And what happens is that those prophets' teachings replace the Bible. In fact, they elevate, they lift up those, they lift up those books higher than the Bible, and they say, no, you got to read this. And many times they say, oh, the Old Testament, that's old. That's out. You know, that's not in. That's the old style. And, and, and what happens is that consciously or unconsciously, what happens is that the, that person's uh, writings are elevated above the Bible, and that is more authoritative than the Bible. No, my friends, there is nothing, nothing that is more authority, authoritative of the Bible. And if God did speak through a prophet, that prophet's teachings would be in, in harmony with the Bible. And that prophet's teachings would not replace the Bible, but rather would be under supporting the biblical teachings. Be careful of following people, denominations that elevate the writings of a person over the Bible. The second way is, is this one. Two ways of adding or taking away to Scripture. A spiritual leader who may have or not have claimed inspiration, a spiritual leader teachings are placed on par with special revelation in which stems uh, cuts out progressive revelation among the community of believers. So this second one is really... Uh, for people who don't claim to be prophets, but but they were the leaders of their denomination. I would say like Martin Luther, like Calvin. And what happens is that many years afterwards, um, communities of faith uh, do not deviate, deviate from the teachings of their founders. So yes, God used Luther to, 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 to co commence the Protestant Reformation. But Luther himself did not completely reform. He was still very, very uh, Catholic in his, in his teachings. God used him to begin this process of, 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 of progressive revelation. But what has happened is that the, the followers of this person 
have etched in stone his teachings and then that disables them from continuing to grow so in a way they are their teachings are added to scripture when in reality a lot of people don't understand that that's just tradition those are tradition but yet their teachings are in in a way symbolically added to the canon that in order to understand the canon you have to accept these teachings and that is very unfortunate let me show you guys something where this is writings now i'm going to show you writings uh, of ellen white uh which i think and the seventh day adventist, adventist church think had the prophetic gift what she says in regards to these uh, these ideas of elevating her works in fact or any works above the bible look at what she says and what she writes he the lord had not given any additional light to take place of his word this light is to bring confused minds to his words so she's talking about herself and she's saying god didn't bring new light he didn't whatever whatever god is doing through me is not to replace the word of god it's not to take place to the word of god if not my gift is to bring people to the word of god you see a prophet a true prophet does not replace the word of god a true prophet only helps people understand the word of god look at what she says in another place and this is significant look brother jay would confuse the mind by seeking to make it appear that light the, that the light god has given through the testimonies her writings is an addition to the word of god but in this he presents the matter in a false light god has seen fit in this manner to bring the minds of people to his word to give them a clear understanding of it. So here, I, I, I don't know why it's admonishing. She's rebuking somebody who thinks that her writings are on par to the Bible. And she says, no, my writings are not equal to the Bible. Actually, my writings are subordinate to the Bible. Anybody who thinks, any seven-day Adventist that think that her writings are equal with the biblical writings is, has a wrong understanding of her gift. Because the gift of prophecy is not to give us new light, is not to give us a new word to follow no the gift of prophecy is to help us understand the clear teachings of the bible can i get an amen yes ah uh, amen so no one see she doesn't say that her writings are equal check this one out i recommend to you dear reader the word of god as the rule of your faith and practice by that word we are to be judged god has in the word in that word promised to give visions in the last days not for a new rule of faith but for the comfort of his people and to correct those who err from the bible truth so what is ellen white saying i recommend to you my writings i recommend to you my prophetic gift and teaching no she doesn't recommend to us herself she recommend to us a god because and the word of god because the word of god teaches us if her writings are true or not because it gives us the test to test her writing so a true prophet is never going to elevate himself above the word of god remember john john said i must decrease and he must increase so a prophet is not going to elevate himself and his teachings over the word of god and the contrary a prophet is going to send people to the word of god because the word of god validates their prophetic ministry and though and 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 the gift of prophecy is not to give us a faith is not to give us a, a rules of faith and practice so basically the prophetic gift is not to tell us what we should do and not do the prophetic gift is to guide us to the bible so that we know what to do and not to do that's why a seven day adventist none of our teachings are based upon what the prophetic gift of ellen g white our teaching as, as a seven day adventist church is based on the bible so what do you think about these things that ellen white is saying is she elevating her writings no she's putting them in the right place let me show you this last last thing and we'll move on <clears throat> pray for me because i'm preaching four sermons today i do not ask you to take my words lay sister white us to one side do not quote my words again as long as you live until you can obey the bible when you make the bible your food your meat your drink 
when you make it its principles, the elements of your character, you will know better how to receive counsel from God. I exalt the precious word before you today. Do not repeat what I said saying, Sister White said this and Sister White said that. Find out what the Lord God of Israel says and then do what he commands. Does this sound like it's a, a prophet that is trying to try attention to themselves? Is the prophet is trying to say, hey, follow my teachings? No. In fact, here she's admonishing, rebuking somebody and says, look, do never, ever quote me again. Don't even read my writings until you understand the Bible. The Bible, I commend you. See, the true gift of prophecy is going to be one that is manifested in a person that doesn't make disciples to themselves but points disciples to Jesus Christ is one that's not going to elevate their word above the others is in fact is one that is going to know that their word is subject and under the test of the word of God they're the little light they talk about the big light and 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 they reflect the light but they're not the light themselves the light is in the word of God so a true prophet would never elevate their teachings above the word of God so that's the first test. If they don't speak according to this word, that there is no light in them. So my friends, if there's anybody who claims the prophetic gift but does not speak according to the teachings of the word and do not place their word subject under the word of God, you can know that they don't have the prophetic gift. What is the second, uh, second uh, test? The second test says, as for the prophets who prophesies of peace, when the word of the prophet comes to pass, the prophet will be known as one whom the Lord truly sent. So the second test is a prophet, when they prophesy, the things that they prophesy must take place. If they don't take place, then, then they, they, they're not true prophets. They're not true prophets. Um, so check this out. A prophet is not the only one that can predict the future. Mm, have you thought about that? So, in, in the last couple, in the last election, the last political election, there were prophets. They predicted a certain outcome. It didn't happen. Are they true prophets? No. And but remember, we cannot just base our faith on things that happen and, and things that are fulfilled, because a prophet is not the only one that can predict the future. God is the only one can, that can reveal the end from the beginning. And he get, has given us the Bible so that we can know that. However, the devil, he can predict the future too. Not that he knows what's going to happen in the future, but he knows what he wants to do. And he can tell people what he wants to do and what he's going to do. And then he can make it happen. It doesn't mean that the prophet is from God. I mean that the devil is from God. It's just that the prophet and the devil is, 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 is he's astute. So we cannot believe everything that is said and if it's fulfilled. Because if we just based our faith on things that are predicted and are fulfilled, then we can be led astray. But this is a, 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 uh, a test because if there's people speaking in the name of God and they say things are going to happen and those things don't happen, how can we continue listening to them? So a prophet, a true prophet, it will prophesy about things that will come, and they will come true, like they said. And and this this one, we can we can go into a lot of more study. Like we can look at conditional prophecies and and also look at uh, apocalyptic prophecies. But I'll leave that for another day. So I'll just give you the basic, basic. The third test. Jesus says, "Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing." But inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You would know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a, bear, a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a, a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that do not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits, you shall know them. You don't judge a tree by the name it wears. You judge a tree by the fruit it bears. 
what is this telling us? What kind of person do the prophets contemporary see and hear? What is that person's real life? What is the general tenor of her life? Reliable or inconsistent thing? Worldly or godly? Faithful to commitment or unfaithful? Do his or her teachings exalt the written word or do they create new and exotic paths that do not find their basis in the word? What does a person's life tell you? Because it's one thing for a person to be this, you know, here in a church setting. What is this? What is a person's life in a non-church setting? Does that person's life, is, is that person's life consistent with the principles of, of God? Is that person humble? Is that person, is that, is that person humble? Is that person do the works of Christ? Or is that person not that? You see, God says, when there is a prophet, you're going to be able to tell because of the life they live. Does that life actually lead people closer to God? Or is that, is that person leading people closer to him? Is that person really making a difference in the world for good? Or is that person not making the uh, world for good? I asked, I asked uh, my friend, Pastor Friends. I was trying to figure out how many prophets are today. How many prophets are, are today? And one of my one of my pastor's friends said said the following. It all depends on how you spell prophet. <laughs> Take that in. In other words, does a prophet's life show that they're in this just for money? Or is it or is it there because they're actually changing people's lives for the for teaching them and going closer to to god i already told you i don't think that there isn't a living prophets today so that makes you think all right last last test is this beloved do not believe every spirit but test the spirits whether they are god because many false prophets have gone into the world by by this know the spirit of god Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. Every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming is not already in the world. Does the prophet teach the whole truth about the purpose of Christ coming in the flesh? If anybody, if anybody claims to be a prophet and then teaches that Jesus Christ is not God in the flesh... That he's not 100% God in the flesh. That is not from God. Here clearly the word says if anybody teaches that he does not come in the flesh. That doesn't come from God. There is Christian denominations. There is believes that Jesus is not 100% God. Jesus is 100% God in the 100% man. Jesus is God in the flesh. Anybody that has the prophetic gift. The gift of prophecy cannot teach that Jesus is not 100% God. And in fact, you know, the person who has the prophetic gift is going to teach you all what it means that Jesus came in the flesh. Because Jesus is our Lord and Savior. So as somebody that teaches the true uh, uh, purpose of Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior is going to commend us to give our lives to the Lord so that he can be the Lord of our lives and we can follow him in every way possible, especially by keeping the commandments of the Lord. And not only that, but it's going to teach us on our other dependence on our Savior for salvation. Works don't save us. No, they don't. Work don't save us, but work demonstrate that we are safe because we don't keep the law to be saved we keep the law because we are saved and we depend on the merits of jesus christ the char, char uh, the matchlet charms of jesus christ so somebody who is a prophet is going to teach all what it truly means that jesus christ came in the flesh and what purpose that he came in the flesh and actually what he is doing today in heaven as our high priest but my friend these are the four tests they have to be according to the a word of God. The things that they talk about have to become true. Their lives have to testify that they are have the spirit of God. And fourth, they have to teach the correct teachings about Jesus Christ. And especially that he came in, in the flesh as God. Remember, in the last days, God promised that he was going to raise up a remnant church. He was going to raise up a church that 
follows all the commandments of God, including the Sabbath, the seventh day of the week, but also he was going to raise up the prophetic gift, not as a, rule, a new rule of faith, but to guide his people. As seventh day Adventists, as I shared with you last week, uh, we, we believe that this uh, that these tests were fulfilled in the life of, of Ellen G. White. And one day I will give just a class on how she fulfilled all of these. But we see that she fulfilled the first one, which is more, one of the most important ones. She doesn't elevate her writings or her prophetic gift above the Bible. In fact, she subordinates her gift under the Bible because she was not given a gift to lead people to her writings. No, she was given a gift to lead people to the holy writings, which is the scriptures. So we believe that she has uh, given, uh, received the gift. And remember what the Bible says. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophecies. Test all things. Hold fast what is good. As I told you last week, you guys know me. I'm not a fanatic. I'm not a I'm not a crazy person. Maybe I'm in crazy in love with Jesus and my life is different, but I'm not a fanatic. I'm inviting you to test this because remember what scripture says. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophecies. Test all things. Hold fast what is good. I want to invite you to test if this prophetic gift through this person has been, is from God. In the next couple of, uh, of weeks, we're going to be reading a book that she wrote alongside with the Bible. We're going to have the book, The Patriarchs and the Prophets, and we're going to have the Holy Bible. And we're going to compare the writings, and we're going to compare to what she's saying, showing and see if it's biblical. And we're going to see if this book actually helps us. Um, <clears throat> because for me, the writings of Ellen White have helped me grow spiritually, have helped me to understand the love of God more. It has given me more guidance about how to apply my life to this century that we're living. My spiritual life in this century that we're living. I don't follow anything that she teaches as dogma. Because the dogma, the teachings that, that I follow are from the word of God. But I read, I have read her writings and I read her writings because I think in them, it, it, there, there's something special in them. So look, Patriarchs and Prophets is all about this. Patriarchs and Prophets covers a sweeping panorama of human history from the creation of the earth to the reign of Israel's King David. With unusual insight, the author describes the role of our planet in the cosmic conflict between right and wrong, truth and error. She describes the tragic rebellion that took place in heaven many thousands of years ago and makes plain that this ongoing conflict between Satan and God affects each person who lives on earth. Patriarchs and Prophets Answer such questions as, where did we come from? Where are we going? If God is all-powerful, why does he prevent the spread of evil and its tragic results? So this book, we're going to read, and we're going to compare with the biblical teaching, and we're going to see uh, how it can help us. Because if it's of God, it will bless us. If it's not of God, I, the moment that you know that it's not from God, then let it go. Let it go. But I believe that this book is uh, it's going to be a blessing. I do believe that God gave Ellen G. White the prophetic gift of prophecy and that she wrote things that are only going to help us. And so, you know, Jesus has been leading the people from the Old Testament onto the heavenly kingdom, from the, from the cross onto the heavenly kingdom. God's people are walking in the narrow way. And God wants us to stay on this path to grow in the knowledge of Jesus Christ through the Bible and through the communion of the Holy Spirit who indwells in us. And I believe that the Lord has given light at the end, not to replace the light, the word of God, but to help a group of people understand the Bible and to apply its principles and to apply them in the 21st century in which we are living. Ellen White lived in the 19th century and her writings still have an effect on people today. So Jesus is inviting you to continue to walk on this narrow way. Jesus is inviting you to continue to be guided by his light. Are you willing to test to see if this is from God? Because God does not want us to despise prophecies. He wants us to test all good things. Are you willing to say, you know what? I'll join you guys. 
I'll join you guys, all of you guys, to read this book and to see if this is from God. Because if this is from God, I want it to be a blessing in my life. That's my desire. I want to be blessed by God. And if God spoke through a person to give comfort to his people, then I want to be comforted by the, by the Spirit of God. Because remember what the Bible says, believe, your Lord, the, believe the Lord your God and you shall be established. Believe his prophets and you shall be prospered. I want to prosper, so I'm inviting you. And the Lord, in fact, is inviting you to give it a try. Will you say, yes, I want to give it a try and I'll read a chapter or two. And if this is from God, then I'll read the whole thing. But if it ain't, God will show me and lead me. This is not from God. How many of us would say, yes, I am willing. I am willing to begin reading the book, Patriots and Prophets. I'm willing to test if this prophetic claim is from God. Now you have the tools to do so. Would you like to do it? Let's bow our heads. Oh, Father who is in heaven, I thank you so much that you have brought us to this place to hear your word, to hear the word of God, to hear the teachings that you have given us, Father, that yes, in the last day, there will be many false prophets. But you have given us tools to understand, to measure a rule. It is the word of God to test all the prophetic gifts, Lord. And Father, I, you have raised the remnant church. You have given a gift to the church, the Seventh-day Adventist church, through the ministry of Ellen G. White, Father. And we want to test if it is true. If it is true, Father. So give us the conviction and the willingness to say, you know what? I will read this book alongside the Bible. And I will see, Father. And I do want to test because I want to be guided by the Spirit of God and not by a false prophetic gift that many people in this world are may perhaps be guided with father we are your children so please bless us and please guide us and please teach us that we may know your will for us so guide this group is our prayer in the name of jesus amen well thank you so much friends for spending this time with me may god bless you may god keep you and may god continue to show you the way have a nice day i'll see you next sabbath